Oma gyanatin ilan hasya Gyanam jana shalakaya Chakshur nilitam yana tasman shuhurabeni Thus far we have discussed about making advancement in Krishna consciousness. So really now what is left to do is to go ahead and do it. Adhiku rasya sankalpa padhiku rasya varjanam We should simply take up those things which are favorable for advancement in Krishna conscious and give up everything which is detrimental to that advancement. It's up to us. It's up to every one of us whether we want to advance in Krishna conscious or not. Ultimately advancement, that is a blessing from Krishna. But the general rule is that God helps those who help themselves. So every one of us should make the endeavor to go back to Godhead. We are all meant for that. We're not meant for staying in this material world. We're not meant for being victims of lust, anger, greed, pride, jealousy and all these things. So we very much hope that all of us here will no longer come back to this material world. We all have to leave these bodies soon. We're not going to be there here very long. I wonder who's the youngest in this room, maybe. How old are you? Fifteen? Huh? Thirteen. I always think you're older, a little tall. So, maybe you'll be here in seventy years' time, maybe in this body, in that body. Certainly within a hundred years, none of us are going to be in these bodies. So we don't have much time. You might think, well, <laughs> I'd probably love to be in for another thirty or forty years at least. That's not guaranteed. There's no guarantee we're going to live even 30 seconds. But even if we do live another 40 years, it's not much done. Years come and go very quickly. How much advancement have we all made since last year? How much have our hearts melted in love of Krishna in the last year? How much have we become free from lust, envy, greed, all these bad qualities? So we have to consider these things. Before leaving this body, we have to become fully devoted to Krishna, prepare ourselves to go back home, back to Godhead. Prabhupada many times said that in his very lifetime we can go back to Godhead. So we don't have to wait for many, many lifetimes. Unless, of course, we want to. Unless we're thinking, well, there must be something left to enjoy in this material world. There must be something I haven't tried yet. <coughs> or even if I already tried to be happy in so many ways and failed, I can always try again. So the only thing that separates us from pure Krishna consciousness is our own insanity. So Krishna consciousness is simply the process of becoming sane. Otherwise, we're, everyone, we're all insane. Because, you know, maybe there's the story of the, uh, the first ever Prime Minister of Independent India, Pandit Nehru. So, as Prime Minister, he used to visit so many different institutions. So, once he visited a mental institution, mental home, so he was visiting the different patients, and one of the patients, he met one of the patients, one of the patients asked him, who are you? He said, I'm Pandit Nehru, Prime Minister of India. So the patient said, um, don't say that, I say that, and he put me inside here. <laughs> so like that, we're all thinking where we are, what we are not. We're all thinking we're someone great, someone wonderful. Actually, we're simply suffering due to not being in relationship with Krishna. And um, Krishna has given us this wonderful process of Krishna consciousness by which we can chant Hare Krishna, like Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. It's a nice thing. And go back to Godhead. I was just hearing Sir of Maharaj's class this morning was saying, the spiritual world is like an eternal Gopanima festival in which everyone just comes together for chanting, dancing, and glorifying Krishna. So we should make this our goal and be serious to prepare ourselves to go back to Godhead in this lifetime. That means not being whimsical, and not wasting time, not spacing out to use this is language, but just going on day after day <laughs> with great enthusiasm and steadiness, always praying to Krishna and with great hope that surely if I try, Krishna will help me. And make this our goal, that Krishna, I don't want to come back here. I simply want to go to you. I only want to serve you. I don't want to live in this material world. Of course, due to contaminations, we are attracted to various things in this material world. But we should know that that is not our self-interest. That any attraction with this material world is simply illusory. 
It is simply meant to bind us up with the animals caught in the trap of the hunter. So we should always pray to Guru and Krishna for the clear intelligence to keep our goal of life fixed on the lotus feet of Sri Sri Radha and Krishna. And to go on endeavoring with great hope to attain those lotus feet. And praying that in this very lifetime we may achieve that goal. There is no need for any of us to come back. We all, everyone can become a pure devotee. It's not only the big Maharaj is sitting on big seats giving big lectures. I'm supposed to go back to God. But every devotee is meant to be going back to God. Every one of us. So that is our goal of life. Empty out this material world. He embraced some trees and they immediately vanished and went back to God. So that is our aim of life. Be embraced by the Muslim Lord and go back to God. Leave behind all our material desires, material hopes and ambitions, and simply aspire to be in the service of Krishna Tanya. Now, there are many other subjects which could have been discussed. One large discussion is that of various attitudes or misconceptions. In the preface to the nature of instruction, Prabhupada has written that advancement in Krishna consciousness depends upon the attitude of the following. I, I've always considered this to be one of the most significant sentences in all of Prabhupada's books. Advancement in Krishna consciousness. What is our aim of love? Advancement in Krishna consciousness. So what is the crucial factor? Prabhupada writes, advancement in Krishna consciousness depends upon the attitude of the follower. 